here you have. And uh, while I was there, I got a reminder, because I'm, I'm a little late, uh, that this meeting was going on Tech for Seniors, it was, you know, a, a, an alert. So when I uh, canceled the alert, wouldn't you know, some video in the background is running, running ads for free solar panels or whatever. I could not find it. I did the stop, you know, in the backup. I did the pull down screen, the pull up screen. So luckily I was in the library and of course there's a lot younger people there. I'm 83 and anybody's younger than me anyways. <laughs> and, uh, and the guy there, Drew, he was having trouble trying to find it. He finally found the video running when he did a pull up screen, which is usually the apps on my one plus phone. And he said he couldn't get rid of it. And then he finally found the X. It was like, you know, hard to see. And he was able to stop it. I'm telling you, that's a showstopper. If we're going to keep having things like that on the phones, you're not going to want to use it. So Jim, Bill, James, what, how do I get rid of those damn pop-ups? It's not the first time. Well, that's really a hard question to answer. It just depends uh, on the phone. And also, um, once you start something, it can run in the background. So the only thing you can do is swipe through um, the screens to see if you can find it like he did. Um, there's, um, I don't know what version of Android you have, but I usually can swipe up and then I'll get these little, it looks like a carousel. And I'll show all the running apps and then I just find the one that's running and then I just hit the X. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a way to, to uh, kill all of those, but uh, at the top of my head, I don't, I can't uh, remember. I'll look it up for you and send it to you. You're doing all uh, of this through a browser. Why not install uBlock Origin and kill most of those ads and stop them from getting there in the first place? You can do that. I, I, he's talking on his Android phone, Bob. You're still using a browser. Okay. The uh, browser is a browser and add-ons go to with the browsers. Okay. You What's can the add an ad. You block origin is one. Uh, there are there are quite a few. I happen to like you block origin. I think it does the best job. What you do have okay. to be careful is that sometimes you get pop-ups within uh, an information window and it could block that one. So if you don't see that where you have to enter a password or something that pops up, well, if that gets blocked, then you have to turn off the ad blocker. Okay. Well, th thanks, uh, both of you. Uh, you know, it, it's, 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 I didn't have any trouble asking questions. I'm sure other people are going to experience it if they haven't already. And it's kind of a good thing to, you know, be on top of if we can. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I've experienced that myself. Carl, you're not the only one. I get something started and then it's running and I can't find it. But like I said, I usually uh, swipe up and get that uh, the little thumbnails. They're kind of coming on a carousel and I just scroll through until I find it and I X out of it. Yeah, and if you're in Windows and having that same problem, do an Alt tab and just keep hitting the tab, holding the Alt key down, hitting the tab, and it'll go through all of the windows yes. you have open. That's the same principle. Yep. Right. So thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone. We're, it's now quarter two where uh, the live stream has started. So we'll be seeing some people coming on over on uh, our YouTube feed. Um, if you have any questions, we're just sitting around having coffee, chatting. If you want to introduce yourself, if you're new here, uh, we'd be happy to say hello to you. And uh, if you have a birthday, Bill James will sing you a happy birthday. Uh, and uh, I always say any complaints, my feelings get hurt easily. So the complaints go to Huey and um, he's, uh, he's a tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, we're just sitting around. If you have any, any questions, uh, we're happy to uh, answer them. The meeting will start, of course, at nine o'clock. Sharp. And the, uh, just on the hour. On the hour. It's not, it's yes, I guess there are, are other people other than the Pacific time zone, aren't there? Yeah. Yep. Can I ask really? a question? Go ahead. Uh, I bought a new Chromebook, but I noticed all the Chromebooks, none of the new ones have a HDMI port on them. Right, right. They probably have a, does yours have a Type-C? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, you'll probably it has a it probably has a Type C port, and you'll probably need an adapter. Uh, you probably if you have what do you want? Do you want to connect an HDMI uh, monitor? Or is that what you want to connect to it? Yeah. Yeah. So there, uh, you'll probably just get. A, I've got a whole whack of adapters sitting here, but you'll need a um, an HDMI. A, you can buy an adapter that uh, hooks on, and it's a, a it's an HDMI to Type C. But don't just buy the HDMI to Type C because you can buy them. And they connect a whole bunch of things. They, they'll connect USB. There's they're they're multi plug you know multi plug adapters, and right. and they're they're fifteen bucks, ten fifteen bucks, and you just plug it into the Type C, and then you can plug all sorts of stuff in. Okay, I have also a question to you mm -hmm. personally. Uh, were you taught refraction when you were a flight surgeon? Because the U.S. Navy teaches their flight surgeons to do refraction. Sorry, do to do what? I Ref, optical refraction for glasses. No, no, no. I never did that. Oh, Glass, I know. I you know glasses. No, I didn't. No, we didn't do. We had to do a lot of eye stuff because you know pilots have to see, yeah. and uh, you know vision is important. So we had to. You know, vision was always an important part of a pilot's exam. Um, so we had to know a lot about glasses and all that sort of stuff. But but we had optometrists that were on the uh, on staff with us, and they. They did all the refractions. And yeah, all I, I don't know why they still do it now, but they used to. And I was, I tried to get them to teach me, but I never had any luck. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't get into glasses. I was, uh, that was just numbers. And yeah, I, I got myopia and I understood the, the basics of it, but I was never my, uh, my great interest was glasses. Although I must say that the, the a lot of the technology in glasses has changed a lot and they've certainly relaxed their, the licensing of pilots with glasses, you know, it, it's changed a lot in the past 30 years. So uh, things have certainly, certainly changed. Yeah, it's interesting that the uh, vision limitation of 50 dop um, sorry, five doctors was because that was the best they could grind into goggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all, all that technology's changed now and it's really, really quite interesting. But uh, sure. yes. Go ahead, Dorothy. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say the fellow there, he needs, yep. I, I use this with my Chromebook on yep. uh, there Saturday. You go. There you and go. it's uh, USB-C on this end. Yeah. And then it's got yeah, look. USB 3, uh, yeah. HDMI 4, right. and a USB-C. Yeah, yeah. They're not very expensive. No, and I got, I got, my must have six here. Um, I got uh, tons of them from, uh, uh, so yes, so that's uh, the nice thing about Chromebooks are is you can plug anything to. I mean, you can daisy chain those forever, and they will they will all work just fine. You can plug a lot of devices. I don't think there's a limit to the number of devices you can even plug into a Chromebook. It works really well for that. The hub the hub that I bought for my Chromebook and, and for my other notebook uh, didn't have uh, an RJ forty five for a, an Ethernet adapter, so I picked up one of those. It's a, a USB-C to Ethernet, right. so I can direct wire into my router. I've been using that on the on my Chromebook on the Windows 11 machine, uh, so it's it's a handy thing. But if you get one of the multiple hubs, it's got a lot of things in it. You might want to consider getting one that does have the uh, uh, Ethernet built built in as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. And also be sure, and uh, if you haven't signed up for our uh, learning Chromebooks, we'll be doing that uh, this Thursday. Uh, so you're most welcome to come. It's free. You do have to sign up, though, and you'll find the uh, sign up sheet on our website and in our newsletter. So um, please come this Thursday. We will have an action packed day, right? Right, Huey? Are we, we going to have an action packed day? Well, I'm working on mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're I a got a whole great big list. I got to narrow it down now, so I get a little. Fit oh, do in. you? Okay, all right, all right. Very good, very good. We'll have lots. And I got, and I got to test. I got to test all the microphones I have to see which <laughs> one works the best on the Chromebook. <laughs> okay, we'll have a we'll have a good time. I'll have to borrow uh, Bob G's uh, new uh, earpieces to see and use the microphone from it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Dick has his hand up. Dick, go ahead. This is for Huey. Um, if I am correct, when I've seen your screen, when you've shown your uh, 
basic screen on your laptop. Um, I see you're not using fences, any, or it appears you're not using fences anymore. Uh, have you dropped it? And if so, why? I had too much on my desktop, <laughs> and it made it uh, uh, a little bit confusing. I try to be generic when I'm demonstrating, and people were confused when they see the different fences. Other than that, I really liked the program. I had no problems with it. Thank you. And I... And I understand uh, uh, they're they're still keeping up to date with Windows 11 stuff. So I would imagine the fences will work on Windows 11. Uh, and they've come up with a Windows 11. Uh, I'll make it look like Windows 10 if you want for about 10 bucks. So uh, it's it's uh, Stardock is the name I believe it is. It's the name of the company. Yeah, I still use it and I enjoy it. Really keeps things sorted out very nicely. Yeah, I, I'm switching between machines all the time, and I just I'm trying to make it so each one isn't so much different than the other. For uh, for those of you who are doing presentations and you want to keep your screen clean, if you on your Windows machine, if you right click on the uh, on your uh, workspace area, you can you'll see an option to hide all the icons, and you click that, they all go away. You have a clean screen yep. and uh, clean screen, and so it's. Uh, I often use that when I'm doing my uh, recordings because you don't want all the messy stuff that's there and it really looks really neat. And then you just right click again and say, bring them all back, boom, and they're all back. So it and works I, really and I, I also turn off the picture so it's a it, make it one color. Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot less confusing too. When you have a picture of your neighborhood, uh, Ron, uh, sometimes it gets uh, a bit cluttered. <laughs> yes, indeed. Also well, make, sure, make sure that your presentation is one isn't one of those icons when you I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 I have done that too yes yeah. absolutely oops 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 <laughs> come back <laughs> yes indeed who is Gordy Ballweg who's requesting who is requesting sorry Bob to control I'm, I'm, I'm clicking on things and I did that by mistake oh, okay. Gory's our Apple teacher at our computer club, so he's a good guy. Greetings, That's fine, Gordy. but I, I'm still not going to have him. Don't let him run the meeting. Camera. Don't let him run the meeting, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's moving up in the world. <laughs> hey, Gordy, Gordy, couple... I've got some good things to say about Apple's iWatch in my presentation today, so pay attention to that. I yeah. will. I will. And, and Gordy, if you're a Mac person, uh, the Sarasota Technology User Group, Stug, uh, on their YouTube channel, it, it, they've got a Mac guy that's been doing a couple of classes. They've been very good. So you might want to take a look at them. If you can't find it, let me know, and I'll give you the YouTube channel. But best thing to do is go to Huey.net, go to my YouTube page, and there's a button there. It'll take you to the Stug uh, right. channel. Yeah. I don't have a Mac. I have everything else Apple, but not a. Oh, I have a Windows okay. laptop. Thanks anyway. He's, he's ambidextrous. Whatever. He's ambidextrous. Yeah. App, Apple dextrous. Apple dextrous. Yeah. Apple dextrous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. So uh, yes, what do we got, Bob? Seventy-two. They're still coming in. Seventy. Excellent. Yeah. 70. So we still have time 70, for 74 now. 74. We still have time for one or two, one or two questions. Anybody have any quick questions that we can uh, that we can uh, answer before we start the meeting? Dick, you got another question? Yes, I see in the chat that the, somebody has asked about the uh, Norton purchase of Avast. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, was looking for a comment on that. So I would love to hear the answer as well. Yeah. Bob would be the person that would comment on that. <laughs> and we will we will say yeah we'll say that from we, when we have the Q and A at the end. Okay, Bob's okay. got a long Bob's got a long answer to that one. So uh, <laughs> no, it's not a long answer, <laughs> but more okay. than what we have for okay the time. Thanks. All right, so uh, yes, interesting. All right, and uh, any other questions? For those of you who are new here, we um, will be starting the meeting at nine o'clock. Uh, 
and we uh, usually have our social hour before, which we're just finishing up, and then uh, the meeting will go um, at, at nine o'clock. Or noon, depending on where you are. That's right, the top <laughs> of the hour. I guess we'll call the top of the hour. Oh, who's, who, did you put a poll up? Did someone put a poll up? Who put the poll up? I don't know. I didn't. I, Dude, I, did. think, it, I think you had better check to see what your settings are, because that poll is, didn't come from you. It didn't come from me or anyone else. You have got some settings that you've changed. It should not be coming from Do anyone. Do you own a smartwatch? And people are answering. Yep. Well, that's cool. We'll find out if you do own a smartwatch. Uh, that's cool. Um, Ron, if it order. didn't come from you, where is the answers going to? Well, they're online the person, here. I can the see the person them. who put it in. Yeah. Do you uh, get to visualize the answers when yeah. it's over? Yeah. Well, I'll, yes. uh, when I end the poll, I think it'll publish the results. Um, oh, you you started the poll. No, oh. I didn't. I don't think. I, at least I don't think. Hey, look what it says. It says there. Oh no, it's going up again. Okay, I thought it, it stopped at thirty four. We have so many more than that. Yeah, I think I'll just yeah. end it. I'll think I'll end the poll now, and we'll share the results with you. Uh, out of the people, anyway, yeah. yeah, we're going to start the meeting anyway. Uh, well, about half. That's a lot more than I thought. About half. Yeah, and some of us can't answer. Yeah, it's about half. That's. That's pretty cool. Lots on smartwatches. Um, we are getting ready to start. Uh, we will be sharing the screen in a second uh, and then muting all at uh, nine o'clock. What have we got? 77 in, Bob? Yes. Okie doke. We'll, uh, we'll get going right at nine. We've got a big meeting for everyone today, so it should be lots of fun, lots of stuff to talk about. We will do that. Nine o'clock. Waiting for the. Maybe somebody can start singing a song. Or we'll cut them off at nine, <laughs> or at the top of the hour. I think we'll just start it. I think we'll just That's start it. the meeting. We'll just start the meeting. You're All late. right. Well, <laughs> we'll mute everyone. Mute all current and new participants. Allow them to unmute mute themselves. I'm going to share my screen. And we'll start. Tech for Seniors, episode 74. It is August 23rd, 2021. We have uh, 77 people with us in the audience today. Welcome everyone and thank you for coming. We do appreciate, uh, do appreciate your, um, your, your being here today. I was uh, listening to Leo Laporte this morning in his tech Tech Guide podcast, and he said he's at 1,822. I guess we got a little ways to go, eh, Huey? Yep. And he's <laughs> weak, and those are weekly too. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So he's up to 1,822. Well, we've got, we got 74. So that's, that's great. So for those of you who are new here, I just want to let everyone know uh, the, the meeting is this is a Zoom meeting, but we do broadcast this meeting over to YouTube as well. So if you want to uh, go to YouTube on our YouTube feed, you can certainly listen to the meeting, but the meeting is a little bit different. Uh, we uh, are gonna go for 50 minutes over on YouTube and then we'll stop just before Ray's uh, music presentation. And, and if you are on YouTube and you wanna come over, there's lots of room here. You can come over and participate 
in our question and answer period, which starts at the top of the hour. This will go on for about 20 minutes and we can answer any questions you have. And then we give you about 10 minutes off. And then we have our premiere service that we launch on YouTube, which is uh, this week, it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be episode 22 from last year. What I do is I take all the, go back to one year ago, which was episode 22. And there's going to be uh, two sections on that. One will be, I'll be doing the final talk on modems and routers. And Huey, do you remember talking on voice typing in Google Docs? You did a great talk about a year ago on voice, voice typing in Google Docs. So both those, um, both those two topics will be available as the premier service at uh, uh, half past the hour. And it will be, um, and the reason that we do this is that you can use these for your computer clubs. Uh, you can, um, they're, they're, they're just, they're chopped up. They take about, the, the whole thing was about 20 minutes and they're, they're ready, for, uh, ready for you to use. Uh, and they're indexed as going back to the original. So if you wanted to see the original uh, episode, you can go to episode 22. You'll find all the links in our newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed already to our newsletter, please do so. Uh, we'll be, uh, you'll be seeing that coming out tomorrow. Um, and of course, we have another show on Thursday this week. Our guest will be Ray Baxter. Welcome, Ray, for that. That'll be great to have Ray over this week. And so we're going to have lots of fun uh, this Thursday, and people may win some prizes. Uh, so welcome, everyone, and let's welcome the staff today, Huey. Uh, yes. What are we doing on Thursday? Tell us. Tell us. We got a busy day on Thursday. Well, What's besides the tech for uh, Senior Live, mm -hmm. after that we have the Learning Chromebooks. And if you're not a registered uh, registrant for the program, you do have to go online and register for it. Mm -hmm. If you received a reminder today, that means you are registered. Uh, but if you didn't receive one, then you need to go to that link that's on Tech for Senior and sign up for Tech for Senior. And then you'll be able to, it'll immediately send you the link for the meeting. And then you'll be able to log on to the meeting on Thursday. Right. And we have, uh, we have that link uh, in our newsletter and also on the website. So uh, you, can, you can certainly do that. Please sign up. If you have a new Chromebook, you're thinking about a Chromebook, uh, whatever you're going to do, I'll be going to be discussing... Uh, the new Chrome OS 92 and all the new features of that. So that should be fun. So hopefully we'll see everybody on, uh, on Thursday morning for that. Excellent. And Bob, there, listen, there are so many leaks coming out now and, and so many people, all the, you know, T-Mobile is losing their numbers. Uh, at and is losing their numbers. What's happening? The world going crazy? No, the bad guys are learning to figure out that, Hey, you guys ain't doing a good job of protecting yourself. And anytime companies don't keep up to date and they have loose ends, somebody will find it. Open wow. their door, they'll walk in. Yikes. I, well, I know you're going to talk lots about that probably in your security update today, but thanks, uh, thanks for keeping us up to date on that. Lots of, lots of things changing in this. And this is Dewey and our, my big week. This is the this is when we get our new watch, right? Right, Dewey? You bet, and I'm pumped about it. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Be, I, think it's Friday. Friday. I think it's and Friday. I think it's Friday. I'm going to use my watch strictly, very strictly, as a health assist. In other words, I'm not, I didn't get the LTE model. I just, yeah. it's going to be straight to help my health. And that's, uh, that's coming on Friday, so hopefully... Um, I think the 27th is Friday this week, and that's when we're supposed to. We see we had to order these pre release because they're releasing them on Friday. So I just hope that I'm around when the package comes and I don't have to miss my package and go and pick it up the following week or something like that. Now it's going to be interesting and it's fun because Dewey's going to have this. The thing that's different between Dewey and I is that Dewey has a Samsung phone and I have a Pixel phone. So one of the interesting things is going to be is to see exactly what works on what phone, because a lot of, there are some limitations with this watch, which of course Dewey, I'm sure will be alluding to in his talk today, but um, in that uh, certainly limitations in, in, in phone specific stuff. So we're gonna, we're gonna 
lots we got lots to talk about right Dewey we're going to have lots of fun right. with this and the the thing is that uh, we have to realize this is not a set situation with the Galaxy Watch 4. Right. It's fluctuating. I mean, it's moving on. It's going to be constantly improving. So right. uh, even if your Pixel doesn't work 100% now, it probably will in a year. <laughs> it better. It better. It just, well, I'm gonna, it just about blew up on me last week. But that's that's the story. That's my my, my show. To, that's my presentation today. So we'll we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, Bill, Bill James, you must have a gadget uh, or something new that uh, you got this week. Haven't um, purchased anything this week. Oh, I did buy two more Hue light bulbs, which I installed on the patio. Uh, one of the bulbs went out, so I thought, well, this is an opportune time to uh, to uh, put smart lights out there. So now, um, in addition to the lights in the front. I have lights on the patio and then I made a zone that's called outdoors. And so they both come on at a certain time and go off at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And so that's, uh, that's my latest addition. But I, I will have something in the future that I'm expecting, hopefully in September. And that's this coffee pot that I've been telling you about. Oh, okay. So that's, well, that's more, probably, more. that's my big ticket purchase for the, big entire, ticket for more for the year. More to come, eh? Ray, what's uh, what's happening in the world of music? Oh, I don't know about music, but in the world of technology, I had no internet service this morning. Uh, I, I planned my cert, my time. I said, okay, I'll be able to, we, we normally, uh, part of the staff, sign in about 10 minutes earlier. And I said, okay, I'm ready to go. And no internet service. I re did the router. I did all the things you normally do. I said, no problem. I have a MiFi from Verizon. I'm going to hook that oh, up. I couldn't, I couldn't find it. <laughs> I'm going crazy because I had bought, used it for on a camping trip. Anyway, long story short, internet service came back from uh, Sudden Link, and I'm in business. Uh, let me show you one other quick thing. We were talking about gadgets and uh, and the adapters. This is an RJ45 adapter. So uh, often I want to do downloads on laptops and either that don't have that jack anymore. So I just plug in my US, my uh, Ethernet cord to this, and then this goes into the USB. And I get the you know the very fastest speeds rather than relying on Wi-Fi. Good stuff. Well, I'm glad you got your internet back. That's a bit scary. But yeah, yeah. It's 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 a, it's a utility these days. It is. It's it like is. water. It is. Bob, are you ready to roll? Let her fly. Let her fly. Hear my sound. Here is the Avast Security News Roundup for the week ending August 20th, 2021. Memorial Health System recovers from ransomware. The network reported on Sunday, 814, that it had experienced an information technology security incident that caused it to suspend all online access across its 64 clinics, including hospitals. Marietta Memorial, Selby General, and Sistersville General. Surgeries have been canceled, ambulances have been diverted, and clinic staff have had to work with paper charts. But on Wednesday, the network announced it had reached a negotiated solution and that it is beginning the process that will restore operations as quickly and safely as possible. While details have not been given out, the wording in the MHS statement makes it sound as though the negotiated solution is a ransom payment. A vast security evangelist, Louis Carones, commented, ransomware attacks can be devastating and the health industry is suffering from them worldwide. Sadly, in hopes of recovering their information, some victims choose to pay the ransom. This only fuels the attackers to attack more. That's why companies have to focus on other aspects besides prevention that will allow early threat detection and limit the damages. They also need to have backups to get them up and on their feet without having to pay. For more on this story, see Ars Technica. Twitter allows flagging of misinformation. This week, Twitter began allowing users to flag misinformation the same way they can already flag harassments and other harmful content. 
The new alert tool comes as a result of heavy government pressure on social platforms to limit the amount of COVID-19 misinformation being distributed. President Biden told reporters in July that Facebook was killing people with vaccine misinformation. When users flag content on the platform as misinformation, they will be prompted to select whether the misleading content is political, health-related, or falls into another category. For more on this, see The Verge. A terrorist watch list with 1.9 million names was exposed online. Last month, a security researcher found an exposed Elasticsearch cluster online containing records of sensitive information for 1.9 million people, including their names, countries of citizenship, gender, date of birth, passport details, and no-fly status. One of the fields listed in the records is TSCID, judging by this and the other fields, Bleeping Computer, posits that TSC ID refers to the terrorist screening center and that the records comprised a top secret terrorist watch list. The researchers reported the list to the Department of Homeland Security and the files were taken down three weeks later. The FBI declined to comment on the matter. Survey shows data collection on the rise. Findings collected this past spring by consultant firm KPMG shows not only that businesses were growing their collection of personal data, but the consumers found data privacy an increasingly important concern. Surveying 2,000 U.S. adults and 250 business leaders, KPMG learned that 70% of business leaders said their company increased collection of personal data over the last year, while 62% of their company should do more to strengthen existing data protection measures. Another key finding was that 86% of consumers said data privacy was a growing concern for them. For more stats, see the full KPMG report. CISA warns of BlackBerry vulnerability. The U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency released an alert this week amplifying BlackBerry's announcement that its QNX real-time operating system can be compromised by a bad ALEC vulnerability, possibly resulting in a denial-of-service condition or having arbitrary code executed on the affected device. The BlackBerry QNX RTOS is used in many BlackBerry operations, including medical devices, factories, cars, and even the International Space Station. CISA strongly recommends that all organizations using the affected RTOS patch vulnerable system as quickly as possible. T-Mobile shares additional information regarding ongoing cyber attack investigation. On August 17, 2021, T-Mobile learned that a bad actor illegally accessed personal data. Our investigation is ongoing, but we have verified that a subset of T-Mobile data had been accessed by unauthorized individuals and the data stolen from our systems did include some personal information. Visit the T-Mobile website for more information and an offer for two years of free ID theft protection if you're affected. That protection is issued through McAfee. This week's must-read on the Avast blog. TikTok is pretty invasive. It knows what you're watching, how much time you're spending there, and every single search you make. And even if you don't have an account, you can still browse around, so should you care, find out in our latest What Does the Internet Know About Me installment. I've also produced a video on this topic that you may find interesting. And that wraps up this week's Avast Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Uh, just to let everyone know that uh, in the newsletter tomorrow in Bob's article, just below his article, 
uh, is a list of all his, uh, is a link to the playlist of all his security uh, news articles. So if you want to look something up, you just click the link and it will, all the articles will be there. And that's in the, uh, the newsletter tomorrow, just under his section. All right, we are going to, I'm looking forward to the next, uh, Dewey's uh, next talk is, is all about uh, the app, the watch, which we're going to be, of course, talking lots about this, uh, this week. So let me just uh, share my screen and we'll see what, we're going to learn something. Good morning, friends. I'm Dewey and my tech talk story for today is smartwatches a new day is dawning yes a new day in smartwatches is dawning both in ios and android smartwatches are multifunction wearables that have sensors for measuring body information that's mostly related to health and sleep but typically have other capabilities as well Dieter Bohn at TheVerge.com says, it's tempting to treat smartwatches as medical devices and diagnostic tools, but they're not ready for that yet. And I, re <clears throat> and I remind you, nor are these devices FDA approved. However, the electrocardiogram function on a few smartwatches has received FDA approval. Currently, the top selling Smartwatches with ECG electrocardiogram approval by the FDA are the Apple Watch Series 6, Fitbit Sense, and Galaxy Watch 3. <clears throat> FDA approval of the newly released Galaxy Watch 4 is pending and expected soon. That other sleep and health functions of smartwatches don't have FDA approval is by no means an indication that they aren't valuable to wearers. Functions like the number of steps walked, heart rate, and blood oxygen saturation may each have value to users so long as they accept the readings as approximate and keep everything in perspective. Without question, the current and very popular Apple Watch Series 6 is the elephant in the room in smartwatches. Alex Allegro <clears throat> at PocketLint.com reports that a newly revised Apple Watch Series 7 will be released as early as the middle of September. It'll be the first major redesign since Apple released its first smartwatch, that was Series 4, and rumors are now buzzing everywhere about how fantastic it's going to be. We had lunch recently with an older lady who was wearing an Apple Watch Series 5. I asked her what she values most about her Apple Watch. There was no hesitation, she replied, it's the fall detection. She hasn't been well, and I know she appreciates that. Though I'm an Android guy, I was absolutely blown away by the Apple Watch's sophisticated and comprehensive fall detection capabilities. For example, it will sound an alarm, and if you're alert, present you with several options. If you're not able to respond, it will contact your iPhone to call emergency services. I'm happy to say that Galaxy Watch 4 will have fall detection as well. Little information has been released so far, but you may expect that it'll have a fall detection accelerometer sensor and app at least as good as its very lauded predecessor, the Galaxy Watch 3. Brian Heater at TechCrunch.com said last Friday, just two days, three days ago, that the recently released Galaxy Watch 4 is one of the few smartwatches that can truly go head to head with the Apple Watch 6. Like Apple is tied to the iPhone, the Watch 4 is explicitly tied to the Samsung ecosystem. It's not only really the best smartwatch for Samsung users, but there's a case to be made for also being the best Android compatible smartwatch, period, says Brian. His perspective on the Watch 4, in my opinion, absolutely hits the proverbial nail on the head based on everything I've learned to date. <clears throat> on August 11th, when Samsung introduced the Galaxy Watch 4, it was accompanied by a glowingly descriptive article 
the title of which was Galaxy Watch 4 and Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, Reshaping the, SAM, the Smart Watch Experience. Reading the article transported me to the proverbial Cloud 9, especially since I had just ordered my new Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. By the way, I ordered a red band because my car is red also. <laughs> kind of goofy, I suppose. When I reached the end of this three-page article by Samsung, I found nearly two pages of what I call CYAN notes, you know, boilerplate. I became frustrated with going back and forth trying to correlate bits of text with its endnote, so I ended up copy-pasting each endnote into the text where it belonged. This produced a very interesting document, which I'd like to share parts of with you now. We'll read you the whole thing. Remember, <clears throat> this is Samsung's text with the end notes, which I research, inserted, excuse me, and highlighted. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Galaxy Watch 4 is equipped with Samsung's bio, bioactive sensor, a three-in-one sensor with a single chip to precisely run three powerful health sensors. Optical rate, electrical heart, and bioelectrical impedance analysis so users can monitor their blood pressure. App availability may vary at launch and may vary by market, operator, or device. Subscription fees may apply for some apps. Detect an AFib irregular heartbeat. App availability may vary at launch and may vary by market, operator, or device. Subscription fees may apply for some apps. Measure their blood level. The blood oxygen sensor SpO2 feature is not intended for use in the diagnosis of disease or other conditions or in the cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of disease. Availability of this feature may vary by market. And for the first time, calculate their body composition intended for general wellness and fitness purposes only, not intended for use in detection, diagnosis, or treatment of any medical condition or disease. The measurements are for the user's personal preference only. Our new body composition measurement tool gives users a deeper understanding of their general health and fitness with key measurements like skeletal muscle, basal metabolic rate, body water, and body fat percentage. In about 15 seconds, your watch's sensor will capture 2,400 data points. The Galaxy Watch series offers our most complete picture of your sleep patterns yet, intended for general wellness and fitness purposes only, not intended for use in detection, diagnosis, or treatment of any medical condition or disease. The measurement, measurements are for the user's personal reference only. Please consult a medical professional for advice. Requires Samsung Health, Sen Health app version 6.18 to view history. Your compatible smartphone detects the sound of your snores. To record your snoring, wear your watch while you sleep, and place your phone on a stable surface near your head, such as a nightstand with the bottom of the phone pointed towards you while your smartwatch measures your blood oxygen level when you sleep. The blood oxygen SpO2 feature is not intended for use in the diagnosis of disease or other conditions or in the cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of disease. Availability of this feature may vary by market. With Samsung's brand new One UI watch and Wear OS uh, powered by Samsung, we've made the Samsung we made, excuse me, we made the smartwatch and Galaxy experience even more seamless. With One UI Watch, compatible apps are automatically installed on your watch when downloaded to, on your phone. Limited to watch compatible apps downloaded via Google Play Store. Available after connecting your watch to a smartphone. Requires the latest version of Google Play Store on your connected device. Built by Samsung and Google, Wear OS lets you tap into an expansive ecosystem right from your wrist with popular Google apps like Google Maps and beloved Galaxy services. Availability may vary by market, operator, or device. <clears throat> 
Galaxy Watch 4 boasts the first five nanometer processor or processor in the Galaxy Watch with a 20% faster CPU and 50% more RAM. Samsung's eSIM technology enables users to leave their phone behind, knowing their smartwatch will automatically sync up and fill the gap. LTE Watch, LTE Watch 4 series only models, standalone voice calling and text messaging requires initial pairing with an eligible Android 6.0 or later smartphone with qualifying plan Please check your smartphone carrier regarding qualifying plans. Standalone functionality limited if pair phone, paired phone is not powered on or connected to a wireless network. A, re a reliable battery is essential to a smartwatch. A Watch 4 Series smartwatch can have up to 40 hours of battery life. Actual battery life may vary and depend on usage conditions such as function settings, playback file type, and Bluetooth signal strength. And when you need more juice quickly, 30 minutes of charging provides up to 10 hours of battery. Now this ends the excerpts from the Samsung article. The new Galaxy Watch 4 Classic I pre-ordered is expected to arrive in about a week. And I admit to be, being really pumped about it. Like most people, I'm very proactive about my health and believe this extraordinary instrument instrument will prove to be valuable in helping me maintain my presently good health. You may recall that I had a stroke nearly four months ago. I thank God that my recovery since has been nothing short of a miracle. I still have physical deficits, but feel this 87 year old kid still has some good years left. Well, that's my Tech Talk story for today. And God knows I'm sticking with it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and good Lord willing, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, <clears throat> Dewey, that was great. I think that um, lots more articles to come about this uh, this watch uh, four that we're going to be seeing. Uh, lots of yellow there in that uh, article. So lots of things we don't know what's going to happen, but it should be fun and we should have lots of, uh, lots of things to talk about. Speaking of talking, Huey, are you ready to tell us all about podcasting? Are you saying I talk a lot? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, but that's, that's, uh, uh, but you're going to tell us about podcasting day, aren't you? I certainly am. Yeah, as soon as I can share my screen and do this, and I'm ready to go. There you go. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Podcasts, the series. This is part one. What is a podcast? I'm Huey Poplock. This is part one of the series. Part two and part three will be over the next several weeks. So what is a podcast? A podcast is an audio program, just like talk radio, but you subscribe to it on your smartphone and listen to it whenever you like. A podcast is a series of spoken word, audio episodes, all focused on a particular topic or theme, like technology, cycling, or startups. You can subscribe to the show using an app on your phone and listen to the episodes whenever you like on your headphones, in your car, or through speakers. If you're new to this, it can be easier to understand if you look at how radio or TV personalities are turning their shows into podcasts. But remember, podcasts have gone way beyond radio. You'll find out more about that in a minute. So, if you're a fan of, of a personality, you can subscribe to the podcast and episodes that are delivered to you each week. That means you can listen to them anytime, rather than be stuck to the radio or TV at the same time each week. Many escape 
the shackles of traditional radio formats to explore brilliantly original approaches and completely niche subjects. For example, they can be any length, from one minute news to a three hour interview. They can be any frequency, from daily to monthly. They can be any format, from simple solo shows up to a mammoth multi person audio drama. They can cover any topic, many of which would never make it onto radio. No matter what you're into, you'll find a show that suits the topics you love and the time that you have. This is from the iHeartRadio listing of podcasts. So if you're into politics, you can listen to the left or you can listen to the right, whatever your choice is. Or if you follow entertainment, it can be anything from Dr. Oz to some technology stuff to the humor of the Ron Burgundy podcast to uh, On Air with Ryan Seacrest or Nikki Glasser podcast and even questions and answers from Mini Driver. Here are the top 20 podcasts from July of this year. The Daily from the New York Times is ranked number one. You'll notice that there are several coming from the NPR, or National Public Radio. The publisher doesn't always matter when it comes to where you listen to the podcasts. Many of these are on several podcast applications, and you can subscribe to them on any of the various programs. Most podcasts today are audio only, even though video podcasts do exist. Podcasting has really grown out of the need for background content. That means something that can entertain you, educate you, or inspire you in the background of other boring or rote activities. For example, one of the most common ways people listen is in the car. You can't watch video there, of course, so audio content is great. In the same way, podcasts are great for listening at the gym while you're mowing the lawn, or on your journey to work. Any moment of wasted time can be a moment for audio. You'll see the Amazon device on the dashboard, and that's how I listen to podcasts. That's one of the ways I listen to podcasts. Of course, that means you need something to listen on, so you might need to get yourself a set of headphones to connect to your smartphone. Otherwise, connect up to your car via Bluetooth, or start listening on the Amazon device or other smart speaker. When you listen to a podcast, you'll discover that many of them are quite familiar. You'll have heard similar types of content over the years from radio to a TV talk show. On the other hand, you'll also hear podcasts that are completely new and entirely different to the norm, thanks to the freedom that podcasting allows. Most podcasts will be themed around one particular topic. The host or host will talk about that topic on every episode. Sometimes it's really specific. Here are the topics on the iHeart podcast lists. Each episode is normally run by one or two regular presenters talking about that subject, and they'll often get outside guests on to contribute or to be interviewed. A lot of podcasts are really simple. Just a few friends chatting about something they're all really passionate about, like movies, knitting, or running a business, but some are really polished and super professional, including theme music, sound effects, and professional editing and more. The more professional podcasts are great to listen to, but they take a lot more time and money to produce. The amateur shows, on the other hand, might have a few rough edges, but it means they can get it out every single week and grow a loyal following. Most people listen to a bit of both types. The biggest factor in most podcasts is the host or hosts, and you'll gravitate towards topics and hosts that you like more than the approach that they take. The most complicated aspect of answering the question, what is a podcast, and where many people get confused, is in the difference between a simple audio file and a full-blown podcast. The simplest explanation is that an audio file and a podcast episode are technically the same. 
If you've downloaded a podcast episode from a podcast site, you've already discovered the fact that you're just downloading an audio file. The difference comes when you add the option to subscribe to that series of audio files. So if you use a podcast hosting service to allow people to subscribe to your series of audio recordings, then you've suddenly turned them from a simple audio file into a fully functional podcast. There are still just audio files, but alongside the subscription, you can now call them a podcast too. The subscription aspect is done for you automatically if you use a good podcast hosting company, but you might want to know a little bit about how it works. It's run through a technology called RSS, that's the tricky bit, and it's just a computer language that lets your podcasting software talk to a podcasting website. This has been part one, what is a podcast, of the podcast, the series. Next will be how to listen to a podcast. I'm Huey Poplock. Thanks for joining. There you go. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Huey. That was really good. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. As I mentioned earlier this morning, I listened to, in the morning, I listened to uh, Leo Laporte and his tech guy talk. So um, lots of podcasts. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested to part two. Yeah, that's that'll be great. Thanks so much for doing that. All right, uh, we're gonna move on now uh, with, with something I have for everyone. Uh, this is a personal thing that happened to me. So I wanted to, I made a little video about it. So I wanted to let everybody have a look at this. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. You know, as a physician, when working in the hospital, I had to make split second life-saving decisions. This last week, when I noticed my Pixel 3 had a swollen battery, I had to make a very quick life-saving decision. Yes, I'm okay. There was no fire. There was no explosion. And my house didn't burn down. But it could have. And today I want to tell you what you should do if you have a swollen cell phone battery. Three things that you need to know to stay safe. Let's get on with it. Now you know the routine. If you like this video, please click the like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Now in this picture, you'll see my swollen Pixel 3 phone. Again, please stay watching till the end of the video. And I'm going to tell you three things that you need to know to keep you and your family safe when using a lithium ion battery. Let's look at the history of my Pixel 3 cell phone. I purchased it from Google Fi in November 2018. Google Fi is the cell phone wing of Google. So I purchased it right from the source. I purchased it and quickly got a protective case cover for it and it has never been dropped. I use it a lot and it's charged by my bedside. It's charged with a Pixel wireless charging stand. The important thing for you to know is that my phone was working just fine. I had no idea that this disaster was about to occur. But there were some clues. Let's look at some of them. About two months ago, I noticed that the volume control on the right side of the phone didn't work. Now, this was most annoying, particularly in the morning when I often listen to podcasts and I had to manually go in and set the volume level to listen to podcasts. I took the phone out of the case and the volume control started to work again. Well, I put it back in the case and thought I'd, it's another challenge and I'd look at that later, which I never did. The phone stayed charged and it really had no problem with it, although it did seem excessively hot when I used it for duo calls with my friends. My plan was to continue with using the phone and purchase a Pixel 6 this October. I sort of knew it would probably be reaching the end of its life now, but really had no clue what was about to happen. Now, last Saturday morning, I was listening to a friend of mine tell a long story. We were at a table and I put my cell phone on the table and was fidgeting a bit. 
And when I looked at my cell phone, I noticed a couple of things. And the first thing that struck me was it didn't fit in the case properly. And if you look on the right side at the top of the picture, you will see that in fact the cell phone is not fitting in the case properly as it is at the other end. Now if you look at the picture at the bottom of your screen, you'll see my cell phone. It is not fitting in the case. You can actually see on close inspection that there is a little bit of a bulge there. The other thing that you can't see is the phone didn't sit flat on the table in the case. So there's a couple of clues here um, that would make you suspicious and it did and that is how I discovered this. But the point that I'm making here is that the case will often conceal the swelling. And if you look at the picture at the top, the problem is obvious. You'll see that the back of the phone is quite swollen and you'll start to see that the battery cover is coming off. And this became very apparent when I took the phone out of the case. Now, the other thing that you should know is that in some phones, the battery is at the back of the phone. And this makes it very difficult to see the problem when it's in a cell phone case. And that was certainly the case with my Pixel 3. Now in the bottom diagram, this is an iPhone that has a swollen battery. It's much easier to see because the swelling occurs at the front of the phone and wouldn't necessarily be hidden by the case. So remember, some phones have the battery in the front, some have the, bat some have the battery in the back. Well, what explodes? Well, phones don't explode, but lithium ion batteries do. Explosions, fire, and personal injury are all on the increase as we use more lithium ion batteries. Remember, lithium ion batteries create intense heat with the fire and are not extinguishable by water. Fires often occur while charging. And remember, I'm not singling out my Pixel 3 as a big problem because all phones are susceptible to this. In fact, there were 20 phones ahead of mine when I was getting a new battery put in of all makes and models. So why does this happen? If you look at the picture in the bottom left, you'll see my swollen lithium battery and what a normal lithium ion battery should look like. If you turn my battery on its side, you'll see that in fact, you can see how swollen it was. Each battery has different electrodes and the charging speed may be too fast. The chip on the phone that monitors the charging level can fail. The battery can be damaged with a fall, or it may be a manufacturing problem with the actual battery. Let's talk more about that. Now in the next slide, I'm going to show you some examples of fires that occur with lithium ion batteries. On the left side, you'll see my swollen battery. Now, wouldn't it just be interesting just to put a knife in that and see what is inside? Let's see what happens if you did that. Watch the picture on the bottom right. Fire, explosion, an injury. Yes. Let's have a look at the next view. Now I want you to pay close attention to this next video clip. It's at a cell phone counter and someone is looking at a battery. And watch what happens. It happens very quickly. Yes, I'm sure there was serious injury. Now let's look at the next slide. You'll see in this picture, you'll see a lady who has a cell phone in her purse. This is going to explode. And I want you to watch and see what happens. Now, can you imagine what would happen if she had that phone up against her ear or under her pillow at night? 
It is amazing the power of that explosion and the intensity of the heat. All right, now let's look at a cell phone that's just charging and see what happens. Quite an explosion. This summer has had record heat waves. This makes the inside of your car very, very hot. One of the tips you can have is just don't leave your cell phone charging in your car. This can have big consequences for your battery. Heat is not a friend of your battery and will lead to what you've seen in the video previously. Conversely, many of you don't remember, but it actually gets cold in this world and freezes. Remember snow? Remember that concept of snow? Freezing and frost? Well, freezing your battery can equally be a problem. So again, treat your phone with care. Don't leave it in the car. Don't leave it in extremely hot conditions and don't let it freeze. Now my recommendations, and we'll get to the three tips in just a minute. If your battery is hot, unplug it and let it cool down. Don't buy cheap or unreliable chargers. This is often a big problem and a cause of these battery explosions. Don't buy cheap batteries and attempt to fix them yourself. Most of the battery failures that you saw in the video today were batteries that were put in as an aftermarket battery selection. This can be disastrous. Do not put these phones under your pillow. Again, that can be really a bad situation. If your battery is losing power, see an authorized dealer and don't carry your phone or your power bank in your back pocket. Two things can happen. You can sit on it and it can deform and bend the battery causing a puncture. And of course you saw the problem that could have. And also sitting on your bum, it causes a lot of heat. And again, this is bad for your battery. Okay, let's get to my three recommendations. Take your phone out of the case and inspect it once a month. Lay it on a table, see if it lays flat. Look at the sideways. I missed the clue on my cell phone. So it's important that you do this once a month or if you have any problems with your cell phone, do it more frequently. Once you identify a swollen battery, get immediate help. This potentially is a very serious problem and you should not charge the phone again once you have identified a swollen battery. The battery has a potential of fire and explosion, which cause, could cause serious injury and burns to yourself or even burn your house down with loss of life. If you do purchase a new phone, please make sure you don't put the phone in a drawer and just leave it. Once that battery is swollen, it is a potential bomb. You need to have that safely disposed of. And last, the third recommendation is never attempt to change the battery yourself. This is a very dangerous situation and please leave this to a reputable certified expert. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Thanks for watching. Please remember the like and subscribe. If you like the video, click the like. And if you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe. Till All right, uh, <clears throat> so that was, the, maybe there'll be some questions in the uh, question and answer. We'll certainly have a, uh, be able to talk about that. Uh, right now, I just wanna say goodbye to our friends over on our YouTube channel. We'll be signing off uh, as Ray is getting ready to um, start his presentation.